Hey, Joel with Growing Veterans. I'm the farm manager and uh, we're here today to install some beehive nukes. There's something about it. I was just talking with uh, Kevin with the Hive 5 and he's like, yeah, he, he definitely knows the, the benefits. Not just the benefits of like getting into the hive and like having to use your grounding techniques and trying to stay calm while things are buzzing around your face, but like all the like stuff that bees make are therapeutic. Mm -hmm. The honey, the wax, the propolis, um, everything is like antibacterial, antifungal, uh, you know, raw honey is good for allergies. If you eat the local raw honey, it can't be just like any. It's like the whatever is blooming usually. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then getting stung. Gut health is very important for bees. So they, this, a lot of stuff they produce is good for like humans too, which is pretty crazy. We've evolved with bees for over thousands of years. The Egyptians, I think, were the some of the first to actually commercialize it. But I'm sure, you know, we've been, human beings have been getting into hives for thousands of years for sure. For that sweet honey. Yeah, look at it. So that's all uncapped honey. That's all honey that is not, um, it doesn't have the the water content that the bees want until so the capped honey here that has almost no water content um, it's good to go they cap it it's good and that's the honey that you want to get when you are extracting the honey for sale or what what have you for uh, eating all right so we're going to be hive uh installing our new hives today and um we have all of our stuff ready um we got our boxes with our five frames in there um, and then the first thing I'm gonna do is get the smoke going really good uh, you don't want really hot smoke because then it like singes the bees wings and it's not good um, you want to just like let it roll for a minute and then um, we just use paper bags uh, with no ink on them they smoking them has ha it, it forces them down into the hive uh, not only that, it disrupts their their antenna and just like their, their orientation of where they are. So when you do smoke a hive, bees actually go down into deep into the hive and then they gorge on honey because they think that their hive is on fire. And so you don't want to smoke too much, but you don't want to smoke not enough to where it doesn't, you know, like keep them in the hive for the most part. Um, it's like a happy medium you gotta find <clears throat> just gotta do it over and over and over you can hear him he's a little angry little guy on my hand here little lady I mean not a guy um so you'll be able to see and when I pull the frames out you'll be able to see the difference between a drone and a and a worker bee, a female. The drones are male, the worker bees are female. So you can see that, that that got them down a little further into the hive. You can, at first you can hear, they're just like, what the hell? And then they're just like, all right, we're going down. Um, so you have some bees on here. Um, we'll just set this right here for now. Frames. So with the frames, what we want to do is make sure that we put the frames in the same order in the box as in in the uh, nuke box. So, and we want to start from the outside. So just so we're not gonna like we're not gonna have to worry about rolling the queen. You want to be really careful, really gentle. Bees can smell fear, so they know. They, they know when your respiration's increasing because the CO2 is what, when you, what you exhale is what really angers them, is what I found out. And so when you're able to control your breath and be nice and slow and methodical in your movements, then it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna pull this frame out. We're gonna check it real quick. You're, we're trying not to touch the sides because that usually rolls the bees. So this is, oh man, this is all capped honey here. Awesome, really dark looking honey. That's great. So there's a drone right there. You can see the compound eyes. See how much bigger and it looks different than the other ones. 
That right there is a drone. Or let me make sure it's not the queen. I don't think it's the queen. No, it's a drone. Okay, so you also want, you know, we want the same direction orientation. They're starting to already be like, what the heck? So just gently set, set them in right here. Might have a little problem with the, just like propolis and stuff. You gotta wanna make sure that the frames are nice and, nice and snug in there. So there's one. And so I use the hive tool, I use the uh, bent part here and I get in between and I just gently try not to squish any bees. They move out of the way, they know what's going on. They're pretty aware of their surroundings. These ones are way, way more calm than the Russian bees. So here we go, some brood. So there, there you see some larva in there. The white stuff, that's a, those are the larva. And then um, these right here, this is capped brood, more capped brood. So the queen may be on here. Uh, I believe that Kevin, I'm not sure if he, if he marked, them. marked the queen or not. Oh, is it that green one? Oh, the yeah, spot? yeah, there right there. So there's the queen right there. Uh, nice. There that's she is. Crazy. Yeah. She is much bigger. Yeah, see how much bigger she is. And, really and the the green thing. Yeah, Is so they, thing? we, yep. So, uh, <laughs> nice, nice polish. beekeepers <laughs> mark their queens, and the, there's uh, certain colors correspond to certain times, that, I believe certain times of the year. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but um, you can always check out Hive 5 Bees and at um, Kevin Mills, uh, his YouTube channel. Uh, he's got a lot of great information. He has a lot of like how to um, install your nukes and how to feed your bees and all that. So definitely check him out. He's a great guy. Um, gave us a, a great deal on, on these nukes. And um, yeah, yeah, we're super grateful to do business with him. And he's the man. He knows what he's doing for sure. <clears throat> Get off of there. I might do one more little since the so queen's in there that's good it's uh you don't need to find the queen but it's kind of peace of mind like just to ensure like okay awesome we do have the queen <clears throat> this is a really handy tool this frame puller it's a just a pain in the butt to try to like wiggle the frames out um this just grabs right onto the top of the frame and pull that right up there's a bunch of larvae in there, you can see the white. I just got stung. <laughs> no matter how many times I get stung, it still scares me. It's just like, ah. Like, <clears throat> then, you know, start to learn how to control your fight or flight response. It's almost like this is bee therapy. You know? <clears throat> oh, yeah, just starting to do a little. More smoke. So we're getting these frames in the exact, the exact way they were in the nuke box. Um, we want to try to. You don't want to squish the bees. You just want to be really slow and careful. And you see, I'm moving the the hive, but that's fine. We can once we're done, we can get it situated on there. All right. So free this one up ones aren't too stuck together there's a few bees that are like hey you can and you can just tell how they fly out of the hive when they're they go right for your face usually that's why it's nice to wear at least well, a I mask I'm I'm learning like honestly like I mean I'm not allergic and you know when I get stung my back pain goes away so I kind of kind of I don't enjoy the pain but <laughs> all right so this, this one's gonna go right Okay, so we could just have a few extra bees in here. I guess we could have dumped them in there like initially, but all you do is kind of gently do that. Shake them in there, good to go. Um, if you didn't see the queen on the any of the frames and you do want to find her, you can obviously be sure you check the box before you kind of toss it. You, oh man, you can see where they were chewing through the wax box there. Um, there's a group there, which 
I think that's just sometimes if you're looking for the queen, you can look for a group like that, and uh, usually they have the queen has like followers that keep her clean and like you know like help her out with the laying. It's her all servants. like a, it's all like a it's a society. It's a, it's it's everybody has their own jobs. They stick to their lane and. <laughs> pretty fascinating so we're gonna do one more smoke real quick just to when you put the inner cover on you don't try not to smash the bees that are in here that are like kind of on the edge um, come on get out of there so you want to make sure use the brush and get them off of here because then they just get smushed between the inner and the outer cover as much as you can. And after so we a while, put. They get not confused of where their home is. Yeah, they. Yeah. Uh, when you put the outer cover telescoping lid on, you want to pull it back. As well, just for now. See, there's still some bees that are like, hey, what the hell? Um, we'll just stick this kind of right in front of the hive. And that'll let. Oh, sorry, buddy. Just smushed. That'll just let them get even more customized. So, all right. What's that big giant fuzzy one right there? Yep, that's a drone right there. Okay. See the big eyes? Like that guy. Yeah, yep. Um, the queen will have a marking on her. And if if uh, you see a big bee, see, cause they do, they look different. They're, they got bigger eyes. There's they have big compound right eyes. Drone middle right there oh is that yeah that's another drone see the eyes are way bigger it's just a bigger bee and what do they do they do nothing they <laughs> eat all the food and they sit on the couch and watch tv and till the the queen is ready to mate and then when the queen does her her flight her uh it's called a mating flight or damn it i forgot what it's what it's actually called but uh she goes up in the air the, the drones copulate with her and then that's it. And then she will have all the eggs she needs to lay. Um, and then the drones don't do shit after that. So if we usually see a lot of drone brood, we'll just like take it out. So yeah, here, I'm gonna open one of these up. It's drone brood. What that like purpley Yeah, thing? it's their eyes forming. Oh, wow. Bean cells look similar, but they look more like a peanut. So drone brood is like kind of like you know how that looked when I opened it up and then I do I have to like when I got stung right here the stinger was still in and it was still pumping venom so you have to take it out with a credit card um, if you take it out with if you try pinching it you're just gonna smush all the venom into your body so credit card just swipe it real quick. Is it true that they die when they sting you? Yep. The females die. Uh, wasps don't. <laughs> wasps are bastards and they will sting and bite you over and over. Um, honeybees, they're, they will give their life for the hive, which is like pretty resounds with veteran and the lifestyle and the culture. And what we were trained to do is, you know, don't leave anyone behind and you know, sacrifice yourself for the greater good. <laughs> so, whether that's stinging or whatever. The honey that we produce goes into, not only do we sell it off the farm, uh, but we also put it into our hot sauce that we have with local uh, hot sauce extraordinaire, Aaron with El Fuego hot sauce. Um, her signature fire in the hole, which includes our honey, um, our serrano and jalapeno peppers, and our garlic. All right, well, thank you for watching, and uh, please hit like and subscribe to our channel, uh, and please spread the word on our mission, which is to empower military veterans to grow food communities and each other.